Okay, we're here. At, we're here in uh, Seattle at the at the Croy, and we're here with John Mellers, who has been uh, long associated with so much research in antiviral and cure. And we just completed a press conference where there was uh, a series of of uh, revelations. Uh, one failure, so I'm going to let you kind of just give us the, uh, the the short skinny on it and see what we've uncovered. Well, Fred, it's good to be with you again uh, in Seattle. We have uh, a variety of information on the attempts to achieve a remission of HIV off antiretroviral therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, some people call it a cure, but cure is a emotional word, and we don't know how to define cure yet in the HIV context, so let's just call it remission mm -hmm. for lack of uh, better data and understanding. Mm -hmm. A variety of approaches are being taken uh, that involve waking up uh, the provirus, which is the DNA form of the virus, to expose it uh, to the immune system or to fortified immune system uh, delivered in the form of uh, cytokines, effector antibodies, T cells, CAR T cells mm -hmm. to seek out and destroy the infected cells. Uh, today we had positive results in a monkey study of a new class of agents that wake up the virus. We call those latency reversing agents. Mm -hmm. And these are the SMAC mimetic variety that activate a non-canonical NF-kappa B pathway that at least in monkeys, about half of monkeys dosed 10 times with this. Mm -hmm. uh, there was evidence of induction of viremia, which is what mm -hmm. we're looking for. Mm -hmm. On the flip side of that, uh, a, a molecule that has shown activity in the past was studied by investigators from the AIDS clinical trial group. Mm -hmm. And the molecule is romadepsin. And the reason to study romadepsin is it's approved for treatment of another disease at much higher dose, uh, a T-cell lymphoma. Okay? And this molecule was given at five milligrams per meter squared, which is about 35% of the dose given for, to treat T-cell lymphoma. Yeah. And it was given repeatedly, and it had predicted effects on the host. It induced the changes in the host cell that were expected, meaning it induced acetylation of proteins called histone, and it activated transcription factors that might have woken up HIV and enhanced its expression. But unfortunately, in this well-conducted, randomized, placebo-controlled trial, there was no effect of mm -hmm. romadepsin on uh, any evidence of viral expression. And, and you mentioned that it was important to have that placebo control. Yes, very important that. to have the placebo control because many things can influence uh, an individual, including the time of day that sampling mm -hmm. is yeah. taken, the stress they're under, mm -hmm. right? uh, and that just changes over time. Mm -hmm. okay. And so having that parallel control group is very important for interpreting results. So we really, uh, while it was a, a failure in getting to the results you had hoped, it was still an answer. It, so it, it, it was a well-conducted trial that disproved the hypothesis mm -hmm. that this drug would wake up HIV. Mm -hmm. And so in, in that sense, it's a success, Fred. It's not a failure. Right. The drug didn't do what we had hoped it would do, but we got a clear answer. Exactly. Okay? Without a control, you never get an un, or you rarely get an unambiguous mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. We also yeah. heard yeah. about the second case of an individual who has been off antiretroviral therapy uh, for more than a year, in this instance, a year and a half, uh, who has not had any virus rebound. Now, this individual had a very aggressive malignancy that couldn't be treated with standard therapy and went uh, into cancer remission as a consequence of allogeneic bone marrow transplant to treat the malignancy. 
that was successful. The consequence of that allogeneic bone marrow transplant is that the individual's lymphocyte system was completely replaced by that from the donor. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately, the donor had a defect in one of the genes mm -hmm. that produces a protein called CCR5 mm -hmm. that's expressed on the surface of lymphocytes and HIV uses, one mm -hmm. form of HIV uses, to enter cells. And that gene is disrupted naturally and there's no CCR5 expression. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, this individual only had virus in his body that used that CCR5 receptor. And so he had a new immune system that was resistant to the HIV he had. So whether there's old virus in his body, it's going to be non-functional as far as... It can't spread. Spread, yeah. yeah. Uh, but let me emphasize, that although it's, it's progress, mm -hmm. let me emphasize that this form of therapy is yeah. inspirational. It's not yeah. a path replicable. forward. Replicable, yeah. It's not replicable. Be, yeah. Well, it could be replicable. But, but, not, but not practically. But not practical. Yeah. And this procedure that he had, allogeneic bone marrow transplant, is, is very intensive. He yeah. had some bad consequences yeah. of that, survived them all. Uh, but overall, it has a non-significant, excuse me, not insignificant, mortality, somewhere between 5% yeah. and 15%. Yeah. So this is not a practical yeah. or actionable right. treatment right. for HIV. So that's the important piece of it, because I think so many people think, well, if, if they did it there, I've got a lot of money, I can pay for the cure. No, you really don't want to go through that. No, you don't taking want to go through Taking treatments, taking the drugs we have today, which are really innocuous, yes. are much preferred over this. Much preferred. Yeah. You can take one pill once a day yeah. and lead a normal life. I, I want to ask you, because it's so important for us to remember all the work that has been done over these many years of the doctors like yourself, and I thank you for your work uh, and laud you for that, uh, that uh, investment in time and and uh, heavy commitment. And so many doctors are getting of age of retirement and still sticking with it. And uh, we really appreciate that work. And, and we know it's important to have the sense of history that you had from day one and or very beginning, of, as it were, to current day, to have that knowledge. It's also good to have the new blood. Yes, Because they have a, they're gonna look at everything again right. in a different light. Yes. And I very keep good. on thinking, what if there was something that we discarded earlier on that was, we didn't have quite all the pieces that we needed to, to put that theory in practice? Do you, do you that, there, regurgitate some of that? So the progress that was made is one of the greatest achievements of biomedical science and medicine. In a short time. In a relatively yeah. short time, yeah. Yeah. okay, between the discovery of the AIDS epidemic in the early 80s to combination therapy that suppressed viremia and halted the disease mm -hmm. uh, was about 15 years, mm -hmm. yeah. a little over 15 years. And so, yes, some things that are now being tried today, like vaccines to control the virus, yeah. right, like cytokines or other immune th immunotherapies are being tried to get rid of the residual virus. Mm -hmm. But we had to block this massive replication and spread of HIV continually ongoing that destroyed mm -hmm. the immune system and led to AIDS and death. We had to block that replication. And that's been a monumental success. And, and it's been incremental. In also incremental. Yeah, yeah. And you know, for HIV remission, we may have uh, a epiphany, an aha moment Mm -hmm. uh, at any time. Believe me mm -hmm. that in 1993, just three years before sustained virus suppression was achieved, nobody thought it was possible. Mm -hmm. At the Berlin AIDS conference in 1993, there was nothing but anger and despair. We had, we had so much, so many of those years. And I remembered, uh, because I traveled to San Francisco every now and then walking down Castro Street, it was grim. It was really a frown on everyone's yes, face. Yes. And that changes over time. We're back to a yeah, more but, normalized society in those days. But Fred, unfortunately, 
what we've experienced in the United States isn't enjoyed around the world. There are many, yeah. many individuals who don't have access to treatment and die yeah. as a consequence of HIV. And there's been some steps in the right direction there, too. Tremendous steps. Which is great to, to find out how we have to root out uh, the people that need to be evaluated and tested. And a little over organic. half of people yeah. uh, are being treated who need mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. And so it, the glass is half full, but there's still room to improve. Well, I'm hoping this new project that Tony Fauci has presented uh, can be a demonstration project, and I hope it's successful because we really need that. We really need to find a way to deliver. Uh, well, I think what may arise if we're successful in the United States, we can set the bar for the rest of the world. Right. It'd be great if we can do that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much okay. for being here great with me. To, thank great you. to see you again, Fred.